Hello there and assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to another episode of the My English Matters podcast. I'm Amna and today we are going to dive into a topic that is crucial for effective communication, especially in professional settings, which is mastering the art of follow-ups. So let me just pull the slide up for you. All right, here we go. Can you see it? Okay, so following up tips and phrases for professional follow-ups. So what exactly are follow-ups? So follow-ups are the actions that we take to remind, check in, or continue a conversation after an initial communication has taken place. So they are vital in ensuring tasks get completed, decisions are made, and relationships are maintained. So I find that a lot of my work is following up with people, especially when you work with a lot of team members or contractors or people outside. So if you are working in a company where you have to collaborate with others, you probably have to do a lot of follow-up, right? So whether it's following up with a client, a team member, or your boss, knowing how to follow up well can make a huge difference in your professional life. So let me just quickly share with you why I chose this topic. So I recently needed to follow up with a team member on a task that was pending. So I knew that she wasn't feeling well, and so I wanted to be sensitive and not come across as pushy or uncaring. But at the same time, I needed to get an update on the task. So let me know if that's something that you face as well. You know, you need to follow up on someone, but you know that they're very busy or you know that person who wasn't feeling well, right? So this got me thinking about how important it is for you to strike that right balance in your follow-ups. You want to be professional, yet empathetic. You want to be clear, but you also want to be considerate. So I thought, you know, even if I have this little bit of conflict, I'm sure a lot of our students who use English as a second language also want to uh, overcome this conflict. Okay, so actually this is the first part of a two-episode series. In today's episode, we're going to focus specifically on follow-ups via text and by email. So two things, text and email, which is more about writing. We will discuss how to craft effective messages that get the response you need while maintaining a professional tone. And in the next episode, we will talk about non-digital follow-ups like meeting in real life or making phone calls. So whether you are a seasoned professional or you're just starting out, this two-part series will give you the tools to follow up effectively in any situation. So in today's episode, we are going to cover how to craft effective follow-up emails and text messages, we're going to talk about tips for maintaining professionalism in your follow-ups. And then we're going to talk about the right approach for different scenarios, whether you're following up with clients, team members, superiors, or contractors. All right, so let's get started. Now, let's kick things off by talking about email follow-ups. A lot of companies use email as their main form of communication. And that's exactly why we're starting here. Do you use email regularly? I know for us at My English Matters, email is crucial. We use it to communicate with our customers, uh, keep in touch with our email subscribers, and even coordinate with contractors like our uh, accountants and lawyers. So it allows us to share detailed information and maintain a written record of our communications. So whether you are following up on a project, a payment, or just keeping a conversation going, Email is a powerful way to ensure that nothing falls through the cracks. So I'm going to share with you a few tips for following up with email. Tip number one is to be clear and concise. So get to the point quickly and avoid unnecessary information. People are busy and they will appreciate an email that's easy to read and straight to the point. So for example, you could say, um, I'm following up on our discussion last week regarding the project timeline. So you could say that, which is something simple and short without having to write a really long introduction. Right. Number two is to use a polite and professional tone. So even if you're following up on something that's overdue, right, might be something that's annoying, it's important to remain courteous. 
So remember, your goal is to get a response or action. It's not to create tension. So even if you're working with a team member who's a bit difficult, who's never replying any emails, not giving you any updates, remember that you want to get an action. You want to get a response. You don't want to cause any conflict, create tension, which is just going to make things even worse. So um, a simple, I hope this message finds you well, or I understand you've been busy, can set a positive tone for your email. Now, tip number three is to provide context. Uh, remind the recipient of your previous interactions and the purpose of your email. You might want to say, as we discussed in our meeting on 15th July, or you could say, I wanted to follow up on the proposal I sent to you last week. So this helps the recipient recall the details and understand why you're reaching out. So this is important, especially if you want to follow up with them, but it's been a few days since you talked to them. Right, so you might want to remind them because they might have forgotten. But if the meeting was just like today, you could just say, as we discussed in our meeting today, I wanted to follow up, dot, dot, dot. OK, so it is important to give um, some context. All right. Tip number four is to include a call to action. So don't leave the recipient guessing about what you want them to do next. Right. So whether it's replying to your email, scheduling a meeting or providing feedback, make sure to state your expectations clearly. Right? You could say, could you please confirm by Friday? Or I'd appreciate your feedback by the end of the week. Okay, so some people, they get tons of email in a day, hundreds of email in a day. And when they receive an email, um, they just read it. And if you're not clear on what you want them to do, they're not gonna do anything. They're just gonna read it and move on to the next email. So do your best to highlight or to be clear on what it is that you want from them. Do you want them to reply? Do you want them to confirm on something? Do you want them to give feedback on something? Try to be as clear as possible in a way that's polite. OK, now let's go through some examples for following up via email. So the first example is following up with a client for a sale. Here's a scenario. Imagine that you've just had a meeting with a potential client and you've discussed your product and they seemed interested, but they just haven't committed yet. So here's the subject that you could uh, write. Thank you for our meeting. Now, it really depends. If you already have emails related to that meeting, uh, you could just reply on top of that email. So it's a hi, client's name. I hope this message finds you well. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me on or thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. I enjoyed discussing how our product or service can help the client's business. So be clear on the client's business, the name of the, the business, the name of your product or the service. It's really important to be a bit personalized rather than making it more general or generic. So as we discussed, I've attached the proposal and additional information you requested. Please let me know if you have any questions or need further clarification. I look forward to hearing from you soon. So I think it is important to follow up, especially with clients, because clients are busy, right? And sometimes they, if you don't follow up with them, they may not take action. So they may show that they're interested in the meeting, but then after the meeting, they just forget and they go back to their normal busy lives. Um, a few, I think it was not too long ago, we had a meeting with a vendor who was interested in selling their textbooks to us so that we could use them in our trainings. And then, you know, there were a few emails that went out, the few emails that we received before the meeting. And then we had the meeting via Zoom. And after the Zoom meeting, we had no follow-up at all. So we did show some interest, but there was no follow-up. There was no email follow-up from them. And I think that they are leaving a lot behind when they don't do those follow-ups because people are busy and they're going to forget. OK, so especially if you are somebody who has your own business or your job is in sales, it's really important to do those follow up emails, at least one email. Right. And I would say go up to two or three emails. A lot of people appreciate those follow up emails because everybody's busy. And if they really are interested in something, they wouldn't mind getting follow up emails from you. 
So this email um, is clear and polite. It reiterates key points and provides the client with the information they need to make a decision. All right, let's go to example number two, following up with a superior for a decision. So a superior is like your boss or your boss's boss or somebody above you in the hierarchy of your company. Right, so the scenario is you're waiting for your boss to approve a project proposal. Right, let's look at an example. Subject, follow up on project proposal. So again, this is just an example. I would probably use the name of the project, right? Follow up on project, whatever, project certified, right? So hi, boss's name. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to follow up on the project proposal I submitted yesterday or submitted on date. Please let me know if you need any more information from my side. Thank you for your consideration. And I look forward to your feedback. Best, and then your name. So this email is concise. It's respectful. It gently reminds your boss about the pending decision. So when you are writing to somebody who's your superior, like your boss or your boss's boss, whatever, somebody who's um, above you in the management, you don't want to be too direct. So this email that I've showed you here, it's not too direct. It's kind of, you know, the understanding is that bosses give approvals to projects. So that's why it's not directly saying, please approve this project or let me know if you approve this or not. Right. So you, you, the polite way is to say, I want to follow up on this project, that uh, the proposal that I've submitted, let me know if you need any more information. Right. So it's kind of like there's an understanding between you and the boss that the boss needs to provide approval for that proposal. Right. So be careful when you're writing to somebody who's more of your boss, unless, you know, you have a really good relationship with them. But even so, you got to look at the situation and you got to look at the context. Example number three is following up on a job application. So the scenario is you've applied for a job and you want to express your continued interest after the interview. So it's good to follow up with an email after an interview it shows that you're still interested in the job. And it shows just the level of extra, uh, you're a person who's a thorough, right? You're a person who follows through, and that would create a good impression on the interviewer. So you could say follow up on job title application. So for example, follow up on marketing executive position, right? Dear interviewer's name, I hope this message finds you well. I wanted to express my gratitude for the opportunity to interview for the marketing executive position at and then the company name on the day. So I would say you could write to them the next day. You could write to them like a few hours after the uh, interview. So not too far ahead because some people, when they're interviewing, they interview a lot of people and they might forget who you were. So I would say try to email them at least a few hours after the uh, interview. I'm very enthusiastic about the possibility of joining your team and contributing to the company's name success. Please let me know if there's anything else you need from my side to assist in the decision-making process. Thank you once again for the opportunity. Sincerely, your name. So this email reiterates your interest in the position and it offers to provide any additional information the employer might need. Okay? Right, so let's go to the last example for following up via email. Following up with a vendor on a pending order. So here's the scenario. You've placed an order with a vendor and you want to check on its status. For example, you bought a chair and you want to follow up with the shop that you bought the chair from, right? This is actually something that is in my real life scenario, in case you were wondering. <laughs> okay, so subject, inquiry on order status, order number. Hi, vendor's name, or the name of the shop. I hope you're doing well. I'm writing to inquire about the status of my order placed on the date of the order with order number, order number, right? It could be the order number, it could be the invoice number. Could you please provide an update on its estimated delivery date? Thank you for your assistance, best regards, and then your name. So this email is straightforward, it's polite, and it's just requesting an update on the order status. Okay, so I hope those examples were helpful for you. 
because now we want to move on to text follow-ups. So text messages are great for quick, informal updates and when you need a fast response. But remember, there is a fine balance between being formal and informal. So while texts are casual, it's still important to communicate clearly and respectfully, right? So here at My English Matters, we use text for quick, efficient communication among team members. So texts help us stay in touch quickly, while email is reserved for more formal or detailed communications, right? So if you're working at My English Matters, you'll know that we communicate via WhatsApp, we communicate via Telegram a lot, rather than via email, because it gets things done really quickly. So um, again, when choosing between text and email, think about the context, okay? Now, tips for following up with text, right? First off, keep your messages brief. Texting is all about quick communication. So get straight to the point and avoid lengthy explanations. So even though texts are uh, less formal, than emails, it's important to stay professional. So maintain a courteous um, tone in your messages. Being polite and clear can go a long way in making sure your communication is well received. Tip number three is to be mindful of timing, right? Try to avoid sending texts outside of business hours unless it's absolutely urgent. Respecting others' time is crucial for maintaining a professional and considerate approach in your communications, right? So I think it's important to not send text messages to colleagues late at night, unless it's really important, unless it's really urgent, or you're in the middle of a big project that, you know, you understand that people are going to be uh, on standby for this for a particular project. So I think that's fine. But you've got to be mindful of timing and not make it a habit of sending texts outside of business hours. Emails, I think, is okay because people don't really look at email after office hours. There are people who do uh, read email after that, but then that's their prerogative, right? But it's because that text are something that there's like um, it's a muddy waters between personal and professional. So I would say be mindful of timing, right? Okay, um, so just remember that when you keep your texts concise, professional, and timely, you can ensure that your follow-ups are both effective and respectful. All right, let's go to example number one, following up with a team member on a task via text. So remember, text, I'm talking about WhatsApp, I'm talking about Telegram, I'm talking about uh, text that you may use at work. Like, I know there's like apps like Slack, um, Teams, Microsoft Teams, if I'm not mistaken. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about text. So you're working on a project with a team member and you need to ensure that they are on track with their part. So you can say, hi, team member's name, just checking in to see how things are going with, and then you can say the task. Let me know if you need any help or more time, thanks. So be specific about the task that you're talking about. Don't just say task, right? You're using my template. You can say copy and pasting my template in your messages. Be specific, what's the task? I want you to uh, create a script for my podcast, right? So what is the task? Or if it's a big project, you could say, you know, about this uh, podcast episode, or you could even break it down. Just checking in how things are going with following up with our client. So be specific about the task if you can. So let me know if you need any more help or time. So this message is friendly and supportive, encouraging open communication. Example number two is following up with a contractor. So the scenario is you've hired a contractor to complete some work and you want to check on their progress. Hi, contractor's name, I hope you're doing well. Can you give me an update on the progress of? Appreciate it. Again, be specific on what you want an update on. Maybe you just want an update on the overall progress of, for example, the renovation of my toilet. So can you give me an update on the progress of the renovation of my toilet, right? Be specific about that. Or maybe you just want to know about um, the tiling part. So can you give me an update on the progress of tiling the walls, for example? So try to be specific on that. So this text is concise and direct, yet polite, making it easy for the contractor to respond. 
All right, third example, following up with a client for feedback via, via text. So you've completed a project for a client and you want their feedback. Hi, client's name. I hope you're satisfied with the project that we completed. I'd love to hear your feedback whenever you have a moment. Thanks. Again, be specific. You don't say, hi, Aisha, I hope you're satisfied with the project we completed. I'd love to hear your feedback whenever you have a moment. Thanks. So that just sounds so generic. It's like, it sounds like a message that you copied and pasted to all of your clients, right? So be specific. I hope you're satisfied with the kitchen that we just completed with you, right? The kitchen renovation, for example. I'd love to hear your feedback whenever you have a moment. Thanks. So this message encourages the client to share their thoughts and helps you gather valuable insights. Okay, last example, following up with a colleague for a meeting. So you are trying to schedule a meeting with a colleague and you need to confirm the time. Hi, colleague's name, just confirming our meeting on Friday at 4 p.m. today, for example. Let me know if that still works for you. Looking forward to it. So this message confirms the meeting time and provides an opportunity for the colleague to make adjustments if needed. Okay, so those are the examples. I hope that was helpful. And some of you might be wondering, what if you follow up and then they still don't reply? For example, this one. Uh, you want to confirm the meeting time and date, right? And then they don't reply. So you want to say, just confirming, uh, say, for example, today's Friday. So you send an email to them. Sorry, you send a text to them saying, I want to confirm our meeting today at 4 p.m. And then they don't reply. It's 2 p.m. What would you do? For me, I would just assume that they read the message, especially if there's a blue tick in WhatsApp. Um, sometimes people don't have that. But I would just assume that they read it. And I say, OK, at 2 p.m., I would say, all right, I'll see you at 2. And then they still don't reply. So I'll just assume that they read it and just get ready for the meeting. I've had that happen a few times already. So just assume that they read it. Sometimes people are just too busy to reply, right? And they think, OK, in their mind, they're like, OK, but they forget to reply. So you could do that. Um, so you may need to send more than one text message to successfully follow up with someone. And you just got to be patient and you got to have uh, a bit of understanding for people. Understand that we're all busy and a lot of people appreciate those follow ups, especially if it's on something that they're interested in or something that they care about, something that's helpful for them. People don't mind getting follow ups, follow up emails. And if, if they get annoyed with your follow ups, then they can just answer you, you know, or they could just ignore you as well. But yeah, just understand that everybody has their own busy lives to attend to. All right, so there you have it. So as we wrap up today's episode, let's just recap what we've covered. We discussed how effective follow-ups via email and text are crucial in professional communication. So emails offer a formal touch, which is ideal for detailed updates while texts provide a quick and casual way to keep things moving swiftly. So we also highlighted the importance of keeping your messages brief and professional, whether you're texting or emailing. Uh, proper timing and a courteous tone can make a big difference in how your messages are received and how you build professional relationships. All right, so next week, we are going to talk about following up by a phone calls or following up in real life because yeah sometimes when you follow up by via text or by email they don't respond so what do you do you may need to follow up by picking up the phone and calling them or going over to them looking for them physically in real life looking for them and following up with them in real life because that's the only way that you can communicate with them if they're not replying or they're not reading your emails or your messages so that's what we're going to talk about next week now, remember, mastering these follow-up techniques is key to clear communication and strong professional connections. Okay. And don't forget, the more that you practice, especially if English is your second language, the more confident you'll become. So thank you for tuning in to the My English Matters podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode where we will explore 
follow-ups via phone calls and face-to-face -face interactions. So if you found this episode helpful, make sure you share it with your friends and your colleagues and your family members and subscribe to our email list. So join our email list for weekly tips. Go to myenglishmatters.com. And till next time, keep practicing and stay confident. Assalamualaikum, and I'll see you in our next episode.